This video is 1.2, um, continuing with the finding limits graphically and numerically. Um, and this is example five. So the directions say, find the limit L, then use the epsilon delta definition to prove that the limit is L. So this is like a combination of examples three and examples four together. Example three made me prove the epsilon delta definition and example four made me find the limit before I started using the epsilon delta definition for anything, okay? So I don't have L, I have to find that. So I can find it by direct substitution. So let's plug in negative 12 for X and we'll get negative three minus three, which is negative six. So now I know that my L is negative six. So this over here is kind of just like my scratch work, okay? Now for my definition, I want to show that for x minus negative 12, my c value, less than delta, I will get my function minus my l, my limit, less than epsilon. So we need to go figure out what this delta should be first. So we're gonna do our side work over here. And I always label it side work so that my reader can tell the difference between my proof and just the stuff that I'm doing on the side, okay? So on the side work, I'm gonna start with the right-hand side. And I want just x minus negative 12 on the inside. Another way of looking at that is x plus 12. So if I can get x plus 12 on the inside by itself, I've done the same thing. So let's first combine our like terms. This would be plus, so that would be a positive three. And if I factor out a one fourth, I would get x plus 12. If you're not sure, distribute this and make sure you get these two terms. So one fourth times x is one fourth x, 1 fourth times 12 is three. Then I'm gonna separate the absolute factor, the um, absolute value of each factor. And then I'm gonna take the absolute value of 1 fourth, which is just 1 fourth. And then to get rid of the 1 fourth, I'm actually going to have to multiply both sides by 4, which means I will get 4 epsilon, okay? Which means my delta will need to equal 4 epsilon, okay? So then when I'm going to my proof, right, we need to start from the beginning. So how do I make the first implication? We're going to say that there exists a delta for every epsilon such that epsilon equals, or you can just say such that delta such that delta equals epsilon over two. And remember another way, or I'm sorry, epsilon does not equal, epsilon, delta does not equal epsilon over two, delta equals four epsilon. But in order for me to put it in my problem, I, um, and that's all I need, I think. I don't need to worry about the other statement. So I'm done there. So there exists a delta for every epsilon such that that delta will be four times each of those epsilons. I'm gonna start off with my statement. This has to be less than delta. And since I found what that delta would be, I'm gonna say this implies x minus negative 12 is less than four epsilon. Now I'm gonna work my way backwards to get the right-hand side, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is combine those um, negatives. 
Next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 4 to get epsilon all by itself because that's what we want at the end of our proof. So I get 1 fourth times x plus 12. Then I'm going to bring in this 1 fourth. Um, but before I do, I have to put bars around the 1 fourth. Even though it's positive, the only way for me to combine it with the other statement in bars is to have it in bars itself. Then now I can bring in the 1 fourth into the bars. Then I can distribute my 1 fourth. Then I will need to break apart that 3 into negative 3 and negative negative 6. And so now this is equivalent to this. So I have shown that for this particular delta, this statement will imply that statement. And therefore, I am done with my proof. Now sometimes you'll see things in the book like QED or just a little box, um, things like that. All that means is that you're, in, you're finished with the proof. Um, it's, I can't remember the, it's in Italian, but it's like quod erat demonstratum, demonstratum, I cannot pronounce it correctly, but it is a um, Latin phrase, and um, basically it just means um, what is shown. So that's the literal translation is what is shown. So this is showing that this statement is true. And so that's the end of the proof. So you'll see either QED in your book or you'll see this little box at the end. All that means is the proof is done. You finished, okay? You wanted to show this. You started with the left-hand side. You ended up with the right-hand side. So you're done. You can put a little box.